happens. Hey guys. Welcome back to Ford Farming. We're back together. It's only been like 18,000 weeks. It's okay though. It is. We're holding our own. We're doing all right. Yeah. Actually, I really honestly don't remember the last time we recorded together. Mm. It's been a while. I was going to say like a month ago, maybe? Halloween-ish? Huh. Somewhere in there? Probably. I don't know. I don't That's know. Too far away. <laughs> I don't remember what I did yesterday, so. As you say, I don't even remember what I had for breakfast two hours ago, so we are <laughs> doing good. I do, because it was amazing. What'd you have? Um, well, okay, I guess I had two breakfasts. On my way to work, I had a French toast butter from Clearbrook. Have you had those before? No, are they good? Oh, so good. I don't, someone told me to get one. I can't remember who, but I finally saw it at our store. And like, we, my local store is, it's small. So like, I feel like we don't get things like when everyone else does. But I saw them there the other day. So I got some um, delicious. And then after I had done with work this morning, I went in and got a breakfast sandwich. It was delicious as well. Have you seen that Quick Trip is coming out with fried pickles? Yes. Have I, you seen them yet? No. Me either. I, I might not pulling our leg because those sound right. Weird. Maybe I'll stop there before work. It's normally, it's like in the morning, so they're probably not going to have them out at like 4.30. <laughs> but I mean, maybe I'll stop before I go back to work and see. Uh, it might be a good yeah. post-bar snack, fried pickles. Mm. Yeah, it would be bit of ranch Mm -hmm. lots of ranch that sounds good I don't even know if ours has a fryer though so I don't know how they would make those that they would taste good I don't either Mm -hmm. report back oh yeah I'll be on the lookout for them if anything I'll stop in Platteville they probably have fryers I was gonna say otherwise if I can find them I'll send some to you (laughs) overnight (laughs) express fried pickles from quick trip uh, I feel like they would well I could pop them in the oven for a little bit I guess yeah do you have an air fryer no me either everyone says they're great but I just I know I'd buy it and I'd use it for like a week and then it would collect dust yeah that's kind of what I did with my instapot I was like oh this is gonna be <laughs> great I'm gonna make so much stuff and now it just takes up the most room in my kitchen yeah I the only thing I use my instant pot for is um hard boiling eggs <laughs> So it's a very valuable kitchen tool. <laughs> Oops. They just scare me. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I guess if I go out of my way to like plan a dinner, I usually use a crock pot if, if I need to. Cause then I can like do it earlier and just let it, let it be. Yeah. I agree. I agree. So, um, let's, let's get going. Cause it's, yeah, we have it. It sounds like we have quite the week that we need to talk about. So oh, do you want to um, start with a high first? Uh-huh. Well, do you have a high for this week? Yeah. I mean, it was a terrible long week, but one, I made it through. Two, the kids did amazing this week. Like they really did good. I, it's really hard to work with them. I mean, it's not hard. It's like, it rises my anxiety level just because you're like trying to do, you know, you're trying to work and then you've got three kids to worry about stuff. They, they obviously, they did awesome. But I think like my high high would be yesterday. I fed calves and I got done fairly early and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I worked like long days. So I like finally got caught up on everything. Um, so then yeah, Friday, trying to think of even my days so yesterday Friday it's Saturday hey um I decided to just leave when I got done I I could there was like stuff I could have done but I was like no I have been working my ass off all week like I'm leaving so I um went and got my nails done I went to Chick-fil-a and I went Christmas shopping and it was a great day and then we it was like it's weather down here actually it was like uh, I don't know 40s and so, um, you and when the kids and I went back to work, like it was, it was just a good day overall. And then we went to last night. That was not so much a high because we waited. I didn't think there'd be that many cars there. We do not live in that big of a town, but really everyone wanted to see Santa. And we were like an hour 
for a little over an hour. And about halfway through that wait time, Sophia, like, all of a sudden got, like, very anxious about meeting Santa and, like, didn't want to, she wasn't into it anymore. Um, It was, it was kind of sad, but, like, Joe got on the truck and literally ran up to him and hugged him and then ran back to me. I was still trying to get Sophia out of the truck because she was just sitting on the floor, like, I don't want to go. Oh, we waited here. For over an hour, like, <laughs> you're going to get your ass out of the truck. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we gave their, uh, their Christmas list, and then neither of them wanted to take a picture with him, so we took a selfie instead, and it all worked out. <laughs> Good. Well, that's exciting. Yeah. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> <laughs> what was your high? Um, yesterday. Yesterday was Friday my birthday and uh we went pheasant hunting yesterday morning I've never done that before so that was kind of fun we got that for my dad for a birthday present in November and we did it yesterday on my birthday so that was good that's fun cool. I think I shot one we got is that like where you go to like a pheasant they have like pheasant farms right and then yeah. they release them yep so there's like a um a farm out kind of by us like a half hour away maybe and they do sporting clays. They have a deer farm. They have pheasants. And they do like other types of birds like that too. Like, I don't know what, the, what else. But you call in advance and you book this. So you like pay per bird. So I think we bought 15 birds and then they take the pheasants out that morning, I think. And they blindfold them and like kind of shake them around so they don't know where they are. And they just let them go <laughs> a couple hours before your hunt. And then um, we had kind of like a guide with dogs and they just ran the dogs um and we're going through like a corn field that they planted just for these pheasants so they don't like mow them down or anything they just let the pheasants hide out in there and then the dogs will run through and try to find the pheasants for you and once they find them they just like stop and point (laughs) and then the pheasants will fly up that's kind of cheesy but it's kind of fun too cool yeah so do it like do they not fly away They do. Oh, okay. I mean, like when they're out in the cornfields, they're still kind of, they're like in hiding because they don't really know where they are, I think. So then the dogs will kind of point and get them and then they'll try to kick them up too. So like if they find a bird, it'll fly up, obviously. And that's when you shoot it. You can't shoot them on the ground. But because we got snow the night before, the pheasants were hiding closer to the ground. So they were easier. They were harder for the dogs to kick up. So I think the dogs like pounced on two of the birds and killed them right away <laughs> before they could fly away. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah. It's like, sorry, birds, you probably would have had a better chance flying away than just sitting there waiting for the dog to come. Right. Yeah. Huh. I th- and then do you eat the pheasants? Do you eat pheasant? Yeah. Yeah. They're pretty oh. good. Like Dan, um, we got to take it all home with us. They'll pluck them and, and, whatever get them ready for you and put them in a bag so Dan last time he went um he made pheasant schnitzel which was really good so you just like pounded them flat and breaded them and pan fried them in butter oh it was really good that sounds good I was impressed it tastes like chicken kind of yeah it kind of tastes more like a turkey than chicken oh, okay. but it was good hmm. so I'm excited I don't know I'm there's something around here that does but yeah it was fun so if you get a chance to go pheasant hunting Oh no, what I do. Oh hi. You're good. Becca is on her phone touched, today. So it's my phone. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. So she's like a little glitchy or something. Blame Joey. So, he took the computer. Kids. Damn it. Had to look at trail cam pictures. So um, Why the break. Do you like this big thing? Yeah. I do. A half, half gallon. That's a lot of water. It is. Um, you know those hydro jugs? Yes. Yes, I do. I, I just, I can't fathom spending that much on a water bottle, even though, like, everyone has them. You know, I just feel like I want to. And so I was at Target yesterday, and they had for, like, 12 bucks. So I got it, because um, I have this thing. I want to call it a toxic trait, but it's not exactly toxic, but <laughs> maybe you sure a lot of people have this. So like, I have a hard time drinking water. I will buy a bottle 
because then I like all of a sudden drink more water for a while and then eventually that doesn't work anymore but that's something I do and then like to um if I feel like unorganized life like buy a new planner and I'll be really good about using it for like a month or two and then I won't be let's just do you have anything weird like that yep I do that with workout clothes oh yeah I do the exact same thing. I'm like, ooh, maybe if I buy new leggings that actually fit, <laughs> then I want to work out. out. Yeah, or if like, ooh, maybe if I have a cute top that I'm going to wear that only I'm going to see because I work out in my home, then I'll work out more. And then I work out for like two weeks straight. And then I'm like, mm, you know, I'm hungry when I get home from work. I'm just want to eat and not work out. And then it just. Yeah. Here we are. Here we are. So cheers to that I'm not when this podcast comes out, I'll have to ask because I'm sure a lot of people have weird things that they do like that, but <laughs> it yeah. makes us feel better for a little. I'm drinking uh, oh god, that's how disgusting. You doing? I'm drinking tea. Oh why is it spicy? Why is it spicy? <laughs> what kind of tea is it? It's Earl Grey tea. Oh. and like Good. I don't put anything in it I just but it's so bitter <laughs> right now I don't know I like I'm right at the bottom of my mug I don't know if I need more water for this tea oh uh. maybe it's a little concentrated uh. I'm not a person don't just don't like tea I can't do coffee oh. and, and I needed some caffeine and I don't want to drink pop constantly so I'm trying to get on the tea train uh. But do you, have you ever had a medicine ball from Starbucks? A what? A medicine ball? No. Oh. What is it? Um, that's a good question. It's I don't know. It's like different kinds of tea, and it's got honey in it and maybe some lemon. I don't know. It's like their secret menu items that I actually like. It's I think it's like peppermint tea and. Some fruit tea, something else. Mm. I don't know, flavors of it are pretty good though, but it's a medicine box. It's like if you've got like a cold or something that's supposed to be good for you. Okay. But now I don't I don't know if you'd want to get it now because they might think you got the Rona. That's actually gonna be my low for the week. Um okay, I just Googled what a medicine ball is. It's actually on the Starbucks menu as a honey citrus mint tea with customizations already set. Here's what's in this cold fighting concoction. Jade citrus mint green tea, peach tranquility herbal tea, hot water, steamed lemonade, and just a hint of honey. That sounds really good. It is, yeah. I don't, I mean, I hate tea, but I like that. Take a screenshot of this. (sighs) Yeah, you can probably make your own for much cheaper. Did I tell you about the time I love peppermint tea. I love it. So I went on to Amazon because I'm lazy. I don't go to the grocery store. Uh, So I ordered what I thought was just like one single box of peppermint tea, like with 12 bags of tea in it. I ended up buying like a whole case of tea. (laughs) So I have 12 boxes of tea, of peppermint tea. So if anybody is looking for some peppermint tea, I will mail it to you because it is coming out of my ears. And that was like three years ago and I still haven't gone through like a box of it. So that's funny. Let me know. How was it expensive? No, that's um, why I didn't think anything of it. I'm like, this is weird. I mean, it was maybe like $15. I was like, that's a little oh, but- expensive. So maybe there's more bags in this box. There was. <laughs> a there was bags. a lot. <laughs> oh, then- so, I've never had peppermint tea. I'd probably crazy. like it, but I feel for some reason you're not supposed to have peppermint while you're nursing. Yeah, I think you weren't supposed to have it when you were pregnant either. Oh, probably was it was. Something. Maybe, maybe it is breastfeeding because then it'll make it spicy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. It's better I- be watching that new too it'll probably be way more funny <laughs> yeah if you didn't know already that's a good segue we um record our podcast now and put it up on youtube uh it's unedited not like i edit a lot of the podcasts anyway but i'm pretty better at it so yeah you don't have to. yeah there's not a lot of 
long pauses or oh shit what should we talk about now <laughs> we're getting better no. that was yeah we're professionals we are we're getting there so anyway we're on youtube now if you want to watch us instead of just listening to us uh forward farming podcast search us on youtube we got a channel subscribe i don't know what that does but subscribe Subscribe. Turn on those post notification bells too if you're feeling oh, yeah. extra spicy. Leave us a comment to know to let us know you're there. Thumbs it up. Everything's appreciated. Be liquor. <laughs> Don't be a lint liquor. Let us know you care this holiday season. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, what's your low then? You you mentioned the Rona. Mm-hmm. Rona. I don't have the Rona. I just have oh. a cold. Oh. Last week. Uh, after my grandpa's funeral, we went over to my grandma's house and we're doing thank you cards. And one of my aunts was sick. She wasn't, she tested negative, but she literally got everyone in my family sick, except for my mom. So my dad, my brother, Dan, I, my grandma, my other aunt were all sick with this cold. So I'm, I'm doing my best to keep it under control so Porter doesn't get it. But he's, I think he's kind of fighting it off. He's sleeping a lot more. He's getting to be a little bit more fussy. I have to suck like a bucket of snot out of his nose when he wakes up in the morning. He coughs a little. So I think he's got like a little tiny fraction of the cold. And I hope it doesn't just like blow up. Oh. But he had a lot of those Frida things. Yeah. Yeah. Dan thinks it's disgusting, but I mean, it kind of is, but it works good. It does. And he kind of likes it, which is weird. Yeah. Jackson does not. There was maybe the first times I used it and he like, I don't even knew what was going on. But when I do it, I, a lot of the times, um, will do like a, the saline mist through his nose so I kind of like piss him off to start with by doing that. And then <laughs> by the get to the snot sucking, he's not in. It. That's, that's a good point though. Yeah. Like Porter, he'll just kind of lay on his changing table. He loves his changing table. Don't know why. Anytime I put him on there, it's just like instant smiles and laughing. <laughs> but he'll just like lay there on his back and he'll just kind of like flail his arms <laughs> around. And I'll put the thing. Yeah, it might be. It's probably more comfortable than his bed. And then as soon as I stick the, the nose suck, sucker in his nostril, he just like kind of <laughs> <laughs> and then as soon as I pull it out he starts laughing so I don't know well because he's like oh fuck yeah I can breathe now <laughs> <laughs> probably it's like oh got all those boogers out thanks ma yeah yeah I so, hate when babies are congested it it sucks especially yeah. when you're like trying to feed them too and they yeah, like can't they breathe don't... <laughs> yeah the poor babies so if I sound a little funky, it's not the Rona. I just have a little bit of a cold. Mm, sometimes. It is. So um, do you want to dive in on your week? Are you ready? Do you need to take a breath? Count to 10? Maybe need to just <laughs> pretend that's beer. Um, all right. Well, my week. <laughs> So Monday actually was um, kind of a, I don't know, Monday was one of those days where it was like a Monday. Everything like major happened, but like little small thing happening. Um, I won't go too much into detail. I don't want to air out too many dirty laundry things, but uh, basically Monday at about 2.15 p.m. I got a text from... Uh, the other calf feeder that said that she couldn't in that night. And I asked why. And she's like, I actually quit feeding calves. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a, oh, okay. Um, and so she every night. Um, you know, night feeders don't take super long. They take a couple hours. Um, and... So, okay. So yeah, we're like two hours before feeding time and she's, she's, she's done apparently. Um, she had a, another job interview that day, which I knew about. I fed for her that morning. Um, cause normally I'm milking Monday mornings, but I fed for her because 
she asked me to and I asked her I was like so this job like are you planning on leaving here she's like no it's just a second job like I'll still feed calves okay well yeah that, that was all <laughs> um so yeah long story short she quit with two hours notice um don't be a dick like put your two weeks in if you're gonna quit I'm sorry but that's just rude are you her boss like are you the one that like um, she didn't tell anyone else she was quitting she just no yeah just I you? I technically am her boss and then like my boss would be uh you know but since I'm the calf manager you know it's my it's my issue to deal with I guess um but yeah, no one else knew she was leaving. She just, just up and quit. Um, so then I became the only calf feeder, which, <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, back in the day, it would have been fine. If I didn't have kids, would have been like, I fed by myself for years, full shifts. Like it was hard, but when you have three kids to worry about now, um, it's just, it's hard, you know, night feedings are hard because Joy works till seven. So, um, they had to come with me and stuff and they did great I like the whole week went better than I could have imagined it would but it was just really shitty of her to just quit and not give any notice um how old was she uh 19 maybe oh I mean like not that that's acceptable at any age but if she was like 15 16 that would have been a little bit more yeah yeah understanding but once you get to 18 then it's just don't be an asshole yeah I just I don't know my only hope I guess is that one day when she's older for a a minute she'll think about what she did and be like wow that that was really shitty of me like I I don't know it is what it is but that and I know it happens a lot on farms I've talked to a lot of people this week that that happens all the time Mm -hmm. it happens with us milking and stuff too it's just it sucks when you know, you're the only other person. Like, it's not like I could call someone else to come in. Um, so yeah, that sucked. But on Tuesday, um, I started training another person. Um, so I'm training her throughout the week, week and weekend now. And I'm hoping next week she's good to go on her own so that I can kind of get back to, I don't know, more regular life. Um, and then I think I have one more girl that I'm going to train as well, just to have a couple more people. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that I, that we <laughs> can figure this out, but it was just, it was a shitty week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I guess after Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday were really busy days, but feeding and going good. You know, the nice thing about it is I, I'm not like confused about anything because I'm there all the time. And so like (laughs) all the calves are being, you know, phenomenal and stuff, but I'll be glad to to get home a little bit earlier. We had no home cooked meals last week or yeah. Oh no. I think the closest to a home cooked meal was a quick trip take home meal. (laughs) That's all right. (laughs) But yeah, we were just on survival mode. So that's all right. As long as everybody Uh, eats, that's, that's the main thing. Yeah. The kids probably had a heyday. We had we had Happy Meals the first day. Second day we had Domino's and take home meal. And I, we did ramen noodles one night because that's what the kids wanted. Like have her. go nuts. Uh, but yeah, it was like a low, but at the same time it was whatever. We made it through. Good. Yeah. I'm glad. Yep. 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 Oh, and then Thursday about Thursday Thursday I woke up so I have this weird thing my body does not respond well to pumping like I cannot pump 24 hours out nursing without getting a clogged duct um I don't I, I just I don't know I've tried different pumps I actually use a manual pump now because I have better luck with that than mm-hmm. my intro uh, I so that last time when I was hunting that I got a bad one well then this week um it was just hard to find time to pump or find time to um nurse him so I went I think I had nursed him on Tuesday morning before I went to work and I had pumped 
the next all Tuesday and all day Wednesday I hadn't nursed them at all because like at work it was easier to give him a bottle of pumped milk than to like stop feeding and and feed him uh so anyway Thursday morning I woke up I didn't really realize I had a clogged duct at first otherwise I probably would have just woke him up to nurse but I got to work and after my first pump I realized I clogged duct after my second pump I didn't get it out and then I had a clogged duct on the other side so I had two of them I thought I was dying uh, <laughs> so I I pretty much just got the necessities done at work and then I texted daycare I was like hey I'm coming to steal Jackson <laughs> um I need him <laughs> so thankfully we got home I took a hot shower and he ate and then I, I was fine like, I just need him to nurse and then he, then I'm fine so that was enough it was like it was a low but at the same time it was kind of a quick fix I guess but I just always get nurse, nervous I'm gonna get mastitis mm-hmm. happens and that's not fun so have you seen like the whole Frida baby line they have like um like a little vibrating thing that you can use I think to help no. with clog ducts I don't I I didn't have that problem I guess I have but... I mean I have heard that you should use like vibration to try and get them like break broke up or whatever I didn't know they had a specific thing for that. I was just like, like not needing it, but like, <laughs> well, yeah, I, just like pick it up with my hand. <laughs> yeah. But it, I mean, oh, it hurts so hard to do that, but I'll have to look into that. Maybe yeah. I know they make actual things that like you literally just put in your brow while you're pumping to help you. I don't know if, I don't know what it does to maybe help you milk out easier or what. Yeah. Check, check out their whole line. I know they're on Amazon for sure. Huh. Like the whole thing is type in like Frida baby or Frida mom or something. I got a lot of stuff. Well, I'm so, really good to that. And uh, I, I was very ignorant when I was putting things on my registry, my baby registry. So this might be a helpful tip for anybody out there that is uh, building a registry. I only registered for an infant car seat and not like more than that. And Porter outgrew it like overnight. So really? Yeah. Like he's, he needs to be bumped up from an infant car seat to like a, a normal car seat. I don't know, like a convertible. What what kind of car seat do you have? Um, it's like a Chico He Fit 30, I think is what it is. It's just like an infant car seat. Nothing else. So it's just 30 pounds. Then it's either, I think it's like 30 inches. I don't know if ours has a weight limit, but he's like too long for it at this point, oh. which <laughs> he's a, he's a big boy. Like he's not like fat. I mean, he's chunky, but he's not like that fat. He's just very long. So right now he's just like, I had to shove him in there last night when we were going to lacrosse for like an hour car ride. He was just so miserable. So I had a quick order one. Um, so for any moms out there, maybe look for like a convertible car seat that's more than just like for newborns and infants so we have one coming um that can grow with him through yeah those the you know the ones are nice like uh that you can just like drop in the base or whatever and like yeah. carry them over. but yeah. even jackson he's kind of at the point where it's like almost easier just to take him out of it now rather than like trying to carry him in in the car seat yeah so um, I, I just typed in like safest convertible car seats on Google or something. And um, one came up, it was like the Graco Forever DLX. For I have that. Do you? Yeah. 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 So I just ordered that and um, hopefully, I think it just shipped. So hopefully we get that pretty soon. So the little guy can go on more adventures. And they're, yeah, they've got like way more padding and stuff. So they're more comfortable. Yeah, we've got, I think, two or three of those, and we have enough car seats that all of our, we have three vehicles, and we have enough car seats that, like, all three kids can fit in, because installing car seats is the worst thing in the world, and it's just not something you want to do, but Graco usually has some good sales throughout the year, too. Yeah, I got this one from Bye Bye Baby. 
I think it's like a, a sister branch to Bath, Bed Bath and Beyond. I think you're right. And um, they just have, I think they're still having a sale. They have different sales on different things each week or something. And we just had a car seat sale and a stroller sale or whatever. So you got 20% off. So heck yeah. Sign up for emails. I know too, um, Target has that thing every now and then that you can bring like an old car seat in and then get like a, I don't know, 20 or 25% off coupon for a new car seat. That's not a bad deal either. No, I don't know if they're doing that anymore, but I see it every now and then. Yeah. They got me yesterday though with their spend $100 in diapers and get a free $20 card. I tell you what. <laughs> so can you just turn around and use that gift card on that purchase or do you have to save it for a future visit? No, it's got to be on the next visit. Bitches. That's where I get you. Yeah. I mean, essentially I figure it'd be like what, 20% off technically? with a $20 coupon it was $25 but I don't know we go target enough that it'll I, get used I'm gonna go I'm gonna go through the diapers so I, I might as well I had to bring back a box of twos because Jackson like all night got super chunky and then the two more um so I I had a full box yet so I exchanged those for three and I still have like two sleeves of twos but I'm just gonna give them to my sister-in-law because she's gonna have a baby very soon so <sighs> we are there. we're still trying to figure out which brand we like best because we had like a diaper raffle from our, our baby shower so everyone just got us like random stuff oh yeah we are very strongly as team pampers family mm-hmm. that's too we tried huggies and he just like reeked of cat pee right away as soon as he peed it was just like instant cat pee smell don't know why i don't like the back huggies like yeah. how they're like scrunched hard to get on and then they're hard to like wrap up yeah and then someone got us like um I don't know if it was like an Aldi diaper or something but it's just like this brand I've never heard of and it was just the thinnest just like panty liner of a diaper <laughs> I've ever <laughs> seen <laughs> and he just thought about peeing and it was destroyed <laughs> <laughs> just to drop it just poof like those dissolving uh, swimsuits <laughs> that I've been seeing everywhere. But yeah, they um, we are a Pampers family. Everything else just- We are too. Joe, them. I should say, Joe um, wore love for a while. Like once he got older, love seemed to work pretty good for him. But Sophia was always Pampers. And right now I always buy Pampers. But. And then someone gave us uh, a box of Hello Bello. I think that's a Kristen Bell brand. Yeah. Like at, at Walmart, I think. Yeah, but <laughs> we got a girl box of diapers. So he, <laughs> I gave this to my mom when he baby when she babysits. So he's got like pink and purple unicorns and flowers. That's awesome. They're taking those for the baby book. <laughs> yep, yep. So they're they're not bad, but they're not our favorite either. So Team Pampers. Yeah, there's just so many brands out there. Like yeah. it, it's weird. And then like every baby is different with what they like and what, you know, what doesn't work. It's just weird. It is. Kids, so. are, weird. Kids are weird. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, hey, you got any goals for the week? Oh, shoot. We're still doing that. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're like that. We're just, I don't even know. We, this is our episode. We don't even need to like have an episode. <laughs> uh, this episode is just our highs, lows, and goals. <laughs> I don't even know. We probably recording at least half an hour already. <laughs> oh yeah. I wish we had a timer. I don't even, I didn't even look to see what time we started. Um, my goal, I kind of want to get Christmas cards out. I'm on top of things this year. I ordered them like a month ago and I might, I might try to address some envelopes today. We'll see. I'm not a, not a Christmas card kind of person. That's probably really shocking. <laughs> don't have my life together enough <laughs> I think I did a year before kids like maybe after our wedding just because we had I had pictures. all the addresses I needed and we had wedding yeah. pictures like I had everything I needed but yeah. I don't know I like getting them someday maybe I'll have life enough together enough to do no pressure 
Huh. That's that's what Facebook and social media is for, anyway. Everybody exactly. that you like. I'll just find one on Canva and then I'll put it on Facebook because I'm pretty friends with like all my friends and family on Facebook. So, right, and it saves you a lot of money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Definitely. What is your goal for the week? Uh, my goal is to once we get off of here, I'm going to wrap Christmas presents. Did you find a hiding um, spot for them yet? No, but I got some really good suggestions. And someone said um, to like put them in the coat that you keep your Christmas decorations in, which is kind of genius because it's it sitting is. empty. And I think Joey just put ours out on the back porch. Um, and it's like, I've got a really pretty big tote that I think everything will fit in. So I'm hoping to get most in there. I was just going to leave it in the back of my truck. Always like, um, you know, raise like, I've got like a uh, cover. He's like, if the rain gets in it, you're going to have some problems. And I was like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> so I think I'm going to do that. Otherwise, I don't know. I'll have to get creative. Last year I did them. I had them in our bathroom. Uh, so we, <laughs> we live in a, a tray or mobile home. I had trailer, whatever you want to call it, a double wide. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, like the old ones, they always have those tubs in them, like those big, those big soaker tubs or whatever. Yep. Um, ours still has it. One one of these years, we're planning to take it out, <laughs> but we haven't gotten that far yet. So it's kind of like a storage area for us. Um, so last year I had them in there, and I like had in a tote, and I just kind of had it covered up with a blanket. <laughs> yep, I and, remember that. <laughs> yeah. It, so it worked until. I don't know if the kids the kids never never found them but they found their cousins which was like kind of in the same area so I just I don't trust it being there this year so I think if I don't fit them all in the tote I'm gonna maybe hide it behind some like clothes in the closet or something and mm-hmm. that was that always, that's always my go-to spot is just throw them in the closet and just wear them with the clothes yeah like kids aren't necessarily old to like go looking for them or anything once to that point it's probably gonna be <laughs> probably gonna be a problem but we'll figure it out. gonna have to rent like a storage locker somewhere and just <laughs> Joey just... was like why don't you just bring them to like his brother lives not too far away I was like well that'd be a good idea I could keep it at his house but I'll try this tote thing this year and then go from there good luck hopefully yep. it all fits in there yeah I I didn't go too overboard, but they were fun to buy this year. So I, they're going to be excited on Christmas morning. I'm excited. I uh, put a poll up to see if people wrap their baby's presents for Christmas, because I don't know what to do. And um, someone was like, just put it all in a tote and then put tissue paper over it. because they're going to have more fun playing with the tissue paper than the toys anyway. It's like, that's smart. For sure. Or like, just use a bag with tissue paper, because that'll be easier to that's kind of true. pull out than... I honestly, I was just talking, talking to my brother about this. Um, he asked what to like get to Christmas. I'm like, he doesn't need anything. Like he's a baby. He doesn't, he doesn't know what's going on, but I got two little toys for him only because I felt like if I didn't, Sophia would be like, why didn't you get Jack anything for Christmas? <laughs> I'm like, oh, <laughs> so I got him a couple of things. I'll probably wrap and then the kids can wrap them, but you could wrap empty boxes and kids would be happy on Christmas morning like True. they just like to unwrap things <laughs> True no, yeah I am um, cuz my mind went to like oh they'll take the boxes and slide down the stairs with them but then I saw an ad on Instagram they make slides for stairs now like you clip on like these plastic things that go over your stairs That's way too safe Whatever happened to a good old sleeping bag it goes so fast on a sleeping bag or what really worked well was wrapping paper mm. I don't think I ever did that because it could rip and you fall but it's also very fast hmm. pro tip or a tote a rubber made tote you go really fast into yeah huh anyway so with like the five minutes we have left in the episode what else do you want to talk about today <laughs> Um, what, I guess, uh, give me like a five minute update. What's going on on the farm, on the marsh? Yeah, we haven't really talked anything farming related for a while, have we? 
It's been oh, a while. <laughs> um, well, we're going to start our, reser- our reservations, our renovations pretty soon. So um, I've, I've mentioned this before, cranberries are a perennial plant, but once they kind of reach the end of their lifespan, once they don't produce as well as they used to, um, we kind of have this planned a couple years in advance. So after their last harvest, we'll go and we'll actually burn all the vines up. We'll just go out with, with uh, a, f- a torch and just torch all the vines, set them all on fire. I'm just picturing you like with a flamethrower, just <laughs> <laughs> take all your aggressions out after harvest, just light it all on fire. Yes, I'm not trusted with that, so I'm not allowed to do it. Shocker. Weird. Um, I know. Weird. Uh, so we burn up all the vines, and then um, for the last month, so I think we're doing three beds this year, so it comes out to like 12 acres, maybe, that we're renovating, somewhere in there, and we'll go and we'll dig up all of the vines, all of the dirt, um, and put, push those in big piles and then we'll go with dump trucks and haul all that old stuff out, put it into a pile um, that we'll use for like road repairs and stuff later. So it's just bad soil that we don't use anymore. Um, and we have to dig all of that stuff out. Just there's no like remaining roots or vines in there. So when we replant in the spring, we don't, we're making sure that's all just one variety and that we don't have the remaining stuff left in there, any stragglers or anything. So then um, after we get all that old dirt hauled out, um, then we turn right back around and, and load up our dump trucks and put fresh sand in there. So we'll have to back uh, all the sand in there. And then Dan will go out and with a bulldozer, push it all flat. And then we flatten that all out, put in new drain tile, put in new irrigation pipes and all that other fun stuff in the spring. So right now that's kind of what we're doing. We're driving truck a lot. We haven't started driving yet, but I think that's next week. We kind of have to wait. Um, for either the ground to be like super frozen so we don't tear everything up with the trucks or uh, before it freezes but right now we have like this weird in-between period where it's cold in the morning and it'll warm up in the afternoon and that really causes a lot of mud and and wear and tear um, weird weather this year super weird so we're kind of waiting for things to freeze up at this point we have a little bit of snow but then like I said it warms up and just creates like a big sloppy mess and we don't want that so that's what we're doing. So catch me in the dump truck, maybe for some more truck talks coming up pretty soon. Do you have any like ice buildup yet from your um, Not really. We might have just like a thin layer on the ponds, but we don't uh, start flooding and doing that freezing thing, the freezing thing, uh, until it gets like really cold. So usually like oh. below zero or if it's going to be really windy and cold. That's what we're more concerned about right now is if it gets too windy while it's like 20 degrees, um, that causes more damage than just the cold right now. So gotcha. usually around Christmas or New Year's is when it is when we kind of start the flooding and freezing process. Gotcha. And then you sand after that, right? Yep. Yep. So that's usually like in February, hopefully. February or March. Catching on. Catching on. You are. I'm impressed. Farmer long. <laughs> I am impressed. Dump truck just drove by my house. Toot toot. That's loud. <laughs> they are. So uh, what's other than you feeding all of the calves? Um, we are pretty slow on the calving end of things, which is actually really nice. Um, we don't have too many more due I think we have one heifer left to calve this year um, since we don't calve heifers out December through March. Um, And then we have uh, a few cows to calve. Um, It's just, it's nice. Things just kind of slow down in the winter time, which is, it's ideal just because everything's kind of harder to do in the time. Um, We're feeding less calves, but it's, it takes longer to feed the calves because like when we water them, have a hose out there anymore because it it just freezes <laughs> so I have to um, water with a bunch of five gallon buckets um and like bottles of water and stuff so it just takes a little bit longer but um so far the calves are all doing good the weather's been pretty wonky mm-hmm. um like it I don't know it'll be like cold for a day and then it warms back up and then like this next week we have 
think tomorrow will be 40. Monday's like 30. And Tuesday's a high of 18 degrees. But then it jumps back up to 40 a couple days later. It's it's weird. But the calves on what I've been doing pretty good. I've had a couple to treat for pneumonia, but that's kind of expected, I guess. <laughs> we vaccinate for it, but with this weather, you can't really totally eliminate it. So um yeah, we're just we're a little bit slower, but kind of just trucking along, keeping everyone bedded up good so they stay warm and that fun stuff. Um I think I don't know, the guys are pretty much just hauling poop or taking care of the cows. <laughs> Things just I don't know. It's a nice little change of it's like obviously there's always still a lot to do, but when it's super cold like this, it's nice to not be outside all day long. Yeah, that's one of the perks about it being cold. Things just kind of slow down and you don't have to be outside quite so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, other than that, we got, I think, one steer going to the locker plant in next week or the week after. I think the week after. Um, so I got to bring him up and then we're just kind of slow slow on our farm too we haven't bought any bottle calves we try not to have calves on milk during hunting and harvest season um because one if we go hunting and we have to like find something to feed the calves for us I mean not that it's difficult to feed bottle babies but it's just a lot less work when they only have to feed grain um and then when Joey's like doing harvest and we're in the thick of it it's just one less chore to have to do Mm -hmm. (laughs) so uh, yeah, we just have some buckets of grain to throw every day. There and that. Lisa's doing good. My spontaneous cow buy. <laughs> good. That I was super impressed with. Um, <laughs> yeah. Everything's everything's good over here. Good, good, good. Anything to make your life easier. So yeah, exactly. Like... <laughs> the bottle babies are like they're fun to have, but at the same time, they're obviously a lot more work. So I think. <laughs> oh, excuse me I think after the holidays we'll probably get some more uh just because that's kind of how we make money on the farm so we kind of need some more but it's did a nice you, little break did you end up getting a lot of your beef sold this year yeah yeah um I mean I I would have obviously liked to go to more farmers markets but I I had gone to maybe two after Jackson was born and I it was too much, you know, like, especially after I went back to work, I, I, I couldn't do it. Um, so I did the Cuba city ones yet. Um, cause that was only once a month and in the afternoon. So that was kind of nice. Um, but I, this is my second year doing the farmer's markets and, um, thankfully I was able to kind of get like be customers, customers coming back now. Uh, so I've had people reach out though they're like hey I got your beef at you know the farmer's market I'd love to get more so that's been going a lot better I think as our name gets out there more Mm -hmm. um and people try it and stuff we've been selling like that mostly um I did a little like ground beef special and stick special for small business Saturday a couple hits for that um I don't know it's hard I wish I could just sell online but I one, I don't have the time. And two, I just, I don't know. It's so expensive to ship things. And then I feel like you almost have to jack the price up of your to like cover the cost of like the boxes and the dry ice and the insulators and all the stuff. And I just, I don't know if I can just stay selling locally and like local deliveries and stuff, I'd be happier doing that, but it's going well. So how far how far do you consider local? Put a little shameless plug out there. I, anywhere within an hour, I guess. An hour, you know, an hour of Hazel Green. Yeah. You know, like if you're in Dubuque or like, uh, even to my parents, they bring a lot of beef back. Um, so I grew up over by Milwaukee area in Waukesha. Um, so they usually bring back some beef to that side of the state. And then when I go back, I bring some too. So Madison area you know I don't I don't mind rain or like meeting up with people or you know like it's 
I don't know. It's worth it if you can find good customers that appreciate the the beef, you know, mm-hmm. and want like affordable beef as well. Um, so yeah, if you need beef and you're semi close to Southwest Wisconsin, <laughs> hit me up. But yeah, shipping is just it's it's too expensive. Yeah, I'm sure there's especially around the holidays too. Oh god, you don't yeah. even know how long it's gonna take to ship something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I could be there in like two days or it could take two weeks and then all that meat is junk and not really worth it, but. There's Porter crying in the background. Oh, I can't hear if that makes you feel better. Oh, good, good. It does. <clears throat> it does. He's been sleeping for like two hours. He was. Nice. He, we didn't get back last night until probably 1130. How was that thing? I was expecting pictures of the bubble. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't really take any pictures. Well, yes, I did. Uh, it was good. It was really fun. We um, went to a, a wine bar type thing that has tapas, just like little appetizers or whatever. And it's like overlooking the river, which is where, where La Crosse has their rotary lights. And it's like a huge, huge thing for La Crosse. Um, so it was super fun. Um, I think we, we got there like at 8.15 is when our reservation was. That was like the only time we could get a bubble big enough for the six of us. <laughs> so big, was, enough <laughs> big enough bubble. Um, but it was heated. There's like a little heater in there and they had blankets on the back of the chairs. So I was a little nervous about him being out that late because his bedtime is usually like around like nine. So like the eight o'clock to nine o'clock hour is like his witching hour. So he just screams nonstop during that time. So I was a little nervous. But he did pretty good. Um, he only cried, like cried for maybe five minutes. And um, there was like this young couple that had a bubble next to us. And they're like, I don't know, five feet apart. And like, you could, you can hear pretty well. It's not like soundproof by any means. So I felt kind of bad for that. But it's like, F them. I don't care. Like, um, it, I mean, it's worse, like if you were in a restaurant, yeah. you know. Yeah. So they kind of gave us a dirty look when we left and I flipped him off. <laughs> they were walking <laughs> away. I was like, this is why you take your birth control. <laughs> but it was really good. It was fun. Uh, so we got home like at 1130 or whatever. And um, he slept pretty much from like 10 o'clock until we got home. And then he changed him, gave him a bottle and he slept straight through the night again. So it was good. Yeah. So now this morning he's just sleeping and. And being a sweet little angel. You're being sarcastic. No, no, he oh. is. He's being a sweet little angel. <laughs> hey, you like, never know. No, no, you don't with me. But he's um he's chewing on a lot more things now, which is yeah. We have like this. Okay, this is my last story, then I'm done. We have like this little um teether toy. I call them chew toys because whatever. It's like this little triangle full of grapes it's like this purple flat triangle thing and there's like a green little thing that he can hold on to and he takes it and he like shoves the whole thing in his mouth <laughs> and then he gags and he starts crying because <laughs> he can't <laughs> shove the whole thing in his mouth oh my gosh so that's a phase that we're at is he's just like discovering things by sticking them in his mouth and does he still like his mushroom yeah and so does the dog and the dog always finds it before porter does so we have to like wash it and then by the time we get it back to him the dog finds it again and so he gets like an hour use out of it every week (laughs) good job puppy yeah good job bear thanks (laughs) Uh, so that's all I have for my little catch up maybe next time we'll have like an actual topic to talk about (laughs) possibly maybe possibly we'll see how long it takes us to record again (laughs) because We might need to catch up again. Yeah, but that's okay. We're uh, thanks, thanks for uh, sticking with us, and um, and being flexible. We're we're doing our best. Obviously, we are. We really are. It's like that. Uh, that real. It's like, what do you do for a living? My best, Tom. I do my best. <laughs> I feel like you just find the best reels all the time. I'm a little jealous. Mine is just like the same three sounds over and over again. <laughs> I've really been off my game lately. I don't know. I just haven't posted like anything. I 
I mean, you're, I'll, g- I'll give you a little slack this week. You're a little. Yeah. I just, yeah. I haven't like had anything busy. creative come to me. That's okay. My last reel with the Mariah Carey thing, which was hilarious, by the way. It was. But I was like literally five minutes. Like I finished that and then I got that, this chat of I'm not coming to work anymore. So it's like my last happy moment. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm glad I made it though. That was funny. It was. It was good. But maybe maybe this week get on my A game a little bit more. Well, hopefully this week brings happiness and joy and stress free activities. We can hope. <laughs> um, guys, if you guys are not following us on all of our social media, before I do that, mm-hmm. uh, we are on Facebook and Instagram at Ford Farm Podcast. You can and YouTube. Follow- and YouTube. Uh, you can follow Amber on all those things and YouTube and at Cranberry Chats. And you can follow me at Farming with the Hobies. I guess on Facebook, we're Hobie Family Farm. I have a YouTube, but I don't post to it, so. And YouTube. <laughs> Someday. Joey wants to start a YouTube, but um, I think that would have to be thing, so I don't, I don't want to do it. Well, I mean, I do, but I, I don't want to edit it. I think is what it is. Tell me about it. <laughs> yeah. Is it, does it take all the other things? Um, Probably depends. It depends. Yeah, it depends that's, if that's you like a... all the media off your phone before you're saved it and stuff. Christ almighty. <laughs> <laughs> what a cluster. The lady that I talked to at Apple was just like, you idiot. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. I don't know what I'm doing. I, I, I should have like used an old lady voice and be like, hello there, Sunny. Can you help no, that's me? That's pretty cool that they got it back for you though. They did. It's, like, it's that's, cool, that's but impressive. It's, it's also creepy that they, like you think it's gone right. from everything. When I, I, that's why when I was up. like, nothing is ever like truly deleted, I don't think. Yeah. Cause like I, like I said, like I deleted it from my phone and then everyone's like oh well you know you have this recently deleted folder on your phone and I'm like yeah but you have to empty that if you actually want storage back so I emptied that and then it was still on the cloud for a couple hours and then it was gone from the cloud so it's like oh it's gone forever nope you have 40 days to recover it fully oh okay which is scary so I have like a thousand things uh showed back up anyway whatever it's fine we're scary. fine yeah it's fine all right. Um, leave us a review if you're uh, listening on Apple Podcasts. We'd appreciate that. Or like you can leave a, a review. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Thanks for listening. And, thanks uh, for being here. Thanks, thanks for supporting us. And we might see you next week. Maybe. Who knows at this point? <laughs> Have a good week, everyone. We'll see you later.